Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're glad to have you here. So you may start with your opening statement whenever you're ready. Okay, thank you so much. My name is Mindy larson Polberg. I'm very glad to be here with you today. I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, today I'm going to focus on three items with the hopes of being three minutes or, or less to leave you with the 17 minutes of questions, which I think might be very important. The three items that I'm gonna to speak to you today uh, were asked by at least one of you, and I think that might be interesting information for the rest of you to receive. And um, I believe these questions um, would show that my placement on the court would be a specific contribution that perhaps other candidates may not have. The first thing I wanna talk about is my philosophy and my work in collaboration and the collaborative approach over the last 20 years. I think that this type of approach in my work, whether it's bringing people together on a piece of legislation, whether it's bringing groups together in support of a general topic is what I've spent my career doing. And when you are a judge, you do need this type of philosophy, not only to be able to work with your colleagues on the court, but in addition, when you're, on, when you're working on a collaborative approach, it requires you to put yourself in the position of all the parties around. And that's a skill that a judge needs to have in order to see what both sides of the case are bringing. In addition, many lawyers are taught and work in a confrontational manner. That's their job. They are uh, to come to court and be in a confrontational position with the other person. Um, that is a great skill. But in my case, because I am, have been working for 20 years in a non-confrontational manner, I think that's something I could bring to the court uh, from the very beginning in day one that is different from the other candidates. The second topic I would like to touch base with you about is the fact that my job is an in-house job. I work for a nonprofit association. Um, I am a lobbyist and I am practicing law and have done so for 24 years almost. So there's a misnomer I think out there that if you're working in house or if you're working as a lobbyist that somehow you are not practicing law. Um, I would just uh, affirm to you that as a lobbyist, something wonderful about it, as a lawyer, it gives me a chance to shape the law in advance versus two lawyers coming into the court before a judge and fighting about what that law means after it's been passed. So it's basically lawyering, but up front. You're lawyering up front for the regulatory process. You're lawyering up front for the legislative process. So it is something that um, perhaps is a, uh, a stereotype or a misunderstanding about what lobbyists do. And I thank you, those of you who asked the question, but I wanted to make sure that that was um, perceived in advance. Um, something uh, specific about this also is that I do think that um, this is something that I particularly could bring. I don't believe there are any other candidates on the Court of Appeals today that have a legislative, regulatory, or association experience. And there are many cases that come before the court that are evaluating regulatory actions, legislative actions, and those type of opinions. Last but not least, um, I did take a look at the existing makeup of the Court of Appeals, including Judge Doyle, who is retiring. But of that group, of six of nine of them are already district court judges, which is great. And we need district court judges to be on the Court of Appeals. Two of the remaining people uh, were involved in criminal law, for example, working for the Department of Justice. Only one of the judges that I can see from the public record is, is something different, where they came to the court from a private practice, um, and that happens to be Judge Greer. And so I just do think that my contribution would be positive uh, to be able to bring some diversity of opinion, some diversity of thought to this Court of Appeals. The last thing I would like to talk to you about is my judicial demeanor. Um, for those of you who were able to meet with me, I am a passionate person. I am enthusiastic about my client, which is the farmers of the state of Iowa. So you might ask, how could I possibly be an advocate right now and turn that around in order to be a judge? What does that mean about your judicial demeanor? Well, first and foremost, I would say that it is our duty and responsibility as a lawyer to be a zealous advocate. 
The rules of ethics require us to be a zealous advocate. So I would say if you have a lawyer who is applying to this court who is not being a zealous advocate, you might want to ask that question of them. Second is, when I talk about lobbying, uh, my philosophy all of these years that I teach to my farmers, that I live in my life, is to be hard on issues but soft on people. And what this means to me and what this means uh, when I talk about it is that I'm going to be a passionate advocate as a lawyer. As a, as a judge, I would be very firm on my issues, but I'm gonna be soft on people. We're gonna be tolerant, we're gonna be uh, respectful, um, we're gonna be polite uh, moving forward. And I think that this particular philosophy of being hard on issues and soft on people would work very well on the bench. And with that, I reserve the remaining uh, amount of my time for your questions, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mindy, you mentioned about being non-confrontational. What has been the most confrontational issue you've dealt with? Yes, our organization uh, has a non, uh, it has a bipartisan pack that deals with, uh, we support both candidates who are Republicans and Democrats in order to advance our policy positions. And one of my jobs is to receive complaints of concern from, from anyone all year long of our membership, but in particular, that time of year when uh, Republicans might be calling us because they're upset with a Democratic um, uh, endorsement and vice versa, and it has really been a great customer service opportunity, frankly, for me to talk with them about the objective nature of why our organization made a decision. Um, and my goal is always to find that person to agree to disagree at the end, even if we can't bring them uh, over to, to uh, our way of thinking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. More questions. Commissioner Friedman. Good afternoon. It's not afternoon. Good morning. So, <laughs> thank you for being with us. Uh, on your application, you uh, indicate that you interact with all 99 counties, all Iowans, and as you know, um, geographics are important to have represented uh, throughout the court. Could you give us some examples or enhance on it? Expand on that, please. Yes, absolutely. Um, so for the corn growers, one of my jobs is to basically serve a town hall function. So if you're a legislator and you go to a town hall and you have to listen to your constituents, we do those uh, for Iowa corn. I did one in Red Oak last night. I did one in Luther, Iowa the night before. I am, uh, this is the time of year we're out and about listening to our farmers on what they need. So through this process, I have developed a great appreciation that our state is not the same everywhere. It just isn't. There are, you know, Iowans in general uh, are, are wonderful to work with, but there are different points of view that come from different parts of the state, and I acknowledge and I know that. And in this job, uh, I've been with Iowa Corn for 16 years. I have been constantly out in the countryside. But in addition, I have worked in Johnston, and I've worked at the state capitol. So I have the opportunity to also work with urban people, and I would like to think that I could be a bridge between rural America, um, rural Iowa, and urban folks. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Goodwin. No questions. Commissioner McMahon. No questions. Commissioner Valentine. No questions. Commissioner Goble. No questions. Commissioner Hoyke. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, I asked you this question, but I, but I think it, I, I really enjoyed your answer, so it, 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 I'd love to have you uh, uh, have the rest of the commission share it. Um, in my opinion, so the Iowa Corn Growers Association is a, uh, a very prominent organization, and you are the director of government relations for that organization. I believe a lot of people would like that job. Why do you want to come over to the Court of Appeals from um, such a, I'll say, a great position? Uh, well, thank you for that question and for the compliment to me uh, with my job. I agree. I, I actually do love my job. I, it, it would take me a lot to lure me away from it. Um, I enjoy working for farmers as I grew up on a farm and whatnot. But I uh, grew up, um, I believe that we are to use our talents to the best of our ability. And as a lawyer, I think that being on the court is the pinnacle of your career. So it's something that I've always aspired to do. It is something that I'd be very proud to do uh, for the state of Iowa. And it would allow me to make a difference for my state. Uh, that is what drives me. It's what drove me to become involved in agriculture because it's an area of passion for me. But it also uh, would allow me to, to continue to use my gifts 
for the benefit of the whole. And in addition, um, I have a huge passion for children. Uh, right now in my job, I get to work on agriculture, which by the way is, is our, if, if you're not uh, familiar with that, it would be anything from you know farming, but it's also energy and environment and water quality and taxes and transportation and all of these issues that uh, I get to work on. But I have a personal, big passion for children through our foster parenting um, perspectives and I think that a lot of cases also involving uh, family law I could be a contribution to the court and be able to do something more so thank you um, it's good to see you again thank you I, I know you've thought about uh, why you're here a lot is there a judge in your mind that you aspire to emulate? I do not have a particular judge that I aspire to emulate, but I'd like to give you an example of how proud I am to be a lawyer um, in this last year. Um, our country is very divided right now. If you look at the statistics, you know, we're about roughly half and half in the politics, and I don't want to get into that. But what I'm very proud of is there have been a lot of lawsuits that have happened between the end of last election and today. And whether appointees have been Republicans or Democrats, I'm really proud of watching those lawsuits go forward where the analysis was uh, a objective and um, really prove to the American people that uh, the court system is um, something that we should take pride in. So in your mind's eye, um, and I understand exactly what you're saying, and, and I asked another candidate about how a judge can um, instill confidence, public confidence in the courts. and, and What's your thought about how a judge can serve to increase public confidence in the judiciary? Right, I think that uh, when you're a judge, you need to project and actually be fair and open to all of the arguments. You must, in your personal life, probably you know not project uh, your partisanship as well because uh, although I do believe people can set aside their partisanship uh, on the bench, I think that that can be done, uh, but it would be best for you not to project that so people feel like they're not getting a fair, a fair case in court. Um, but I do feel like the cases, again, going forward this year have been a bright moment for our country, showing that our lawyers are going to look at just the facts. They're going to look at what's going forward, regardless of what you know, is happening in the social media or public opinion. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask one because I wanted to make sure we got around the corn. Thank you. Um, you've talked a lot about your <coughs> lobbying experience in the Corn Growers Association, but you were in private practice before you went to work for the Corn Growers, correct? Yes. So tell me, because I, I want the commission not to have a false impression that you would come to the Court of Appeals as someone with legislative experience alone. Thank you. And not have other experience in other areas. <coughs> uh, but I do want to ask you, everyone that comes to this job has to admit that they don't have experience in some slice of the pie that makes up the cases <coughs> before the Court of Appeals, which is a deficiency. Um, I'd like to know when you show up to the Court of Appeals and the cases start to come off the conveyor belt uh, and you're called upon to make rulings once every other day or once every three days, how what tricks of the trade you're going to apply to that quick process? Absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you for the question. Um, I did practice law coming out of law school with a firm called Beving, Swanson & Forrest. It was located over here on East 4th in a beautiful building that's on the historic uh, uh, list that you should see sometime. Um, our firm practiced every kind of law except not criminal law. And if you're... you're 
I would admittedly say to you that is my weak area. I took it in law school, I got an A in criminal law, and I got an A in criminal procedure, but since then I have not practiced it. Um, but in this case, I still feel comfortable in applying for it because all of the members of the court without exception already have that criminal law experience. And so I would humbly admit that I do not have that experience and go to work immediately in making sure that I am reading up on it and making sure that I am following the law and then also asking of my colleagues their experience and their advice and support. Much like if a case comes before them and it's a, a case that's a let's say it's a will and they're fighting about land and it has to do with agricultural property, perhaps that lawyer would come to me and ask me something about agricultural law. And I think that the camaraderie that the court would have um, would be something that I can contribute to in that way. So that is definitely my weakness. weakness. I admit it, but I would have to overwork it to make sure that, that I would be presenting a fair uh, case to um, the litigants going forward. Um, something else about the pace. This court puts out so many cases. It's almost daunting just looking at it, but I will tell you in my current work, the pace of work is so frighteningly fast that I look forward to that. I thrive in it, and um, I, 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 look, I would look forward to that actually having something different to work on um, most every day. And then uh, last but not least, I wanna go back to talk about my practice of law when I first came out of law school. Um, we had a, a firm, they had about, there was about 10 partners. I was the only associate at that time. They were working on hiring another, but basically I had great experience in a wide variety of cases. And my partners gave me the blessing of being able to go straight to court right away. I specifically remember that on the week, the very week that I was sworn in and had just passed the bar, um, my partner sent me to a hearing in Southern Iowa. I was down on Highway 2 doing a hearing um, right then and had an opportunity right from the beginning where many of my peers did not get a chance to do that. And so I'm really thankful for the opportunities that I have had. I am very um, uh, supportive and I know that it's important that it's that lawyers have to be on the Court of Appeals who have been constantly engaged in litigation, but I would just offer to you again, I would bring that um, perhaps a difference of opinion to provide some diversity. Thank you. Did you have a question about the policy? Yeah, I've got kind of a personal question. I, I know you minored in Spanish. Do you maintain your proficiency in Spanish? Proficiency, I think, maybe would be a stretch. But yes, I continue to pay attention to Spanish. I continue to use it. Um, my children, I, I do have um, eight children. And um, so far, uh, four of them have taken Spanish in high school. And so I engage with them uh, whenever I can. Uh, I do get the opportunity to travel internationally with the corn growers from time to time uh, to places where we have markets, which include Central America and South America. And I have taken the opportunity to use it then. Would I say proficient? I'm much better at listening and hearing and knowing what someone is saying versus um, getting it out and speaking outwardly. That would be a, um, a diff uh, not as, I'm not as strong on the outward speaking as I am to be able to hear and understand. Understood, thank you. Yes. Any other commissioners have questions? I have one question. You mentioned your parents of eight children and I know great experiences with foster care. Can you tell us a little bit about how that that experience might um, help you on the Court of Appeals? Yes, so um, we, my husband and I have been foster parents. Um, we were went through the certification of classes for the state of Iowa in 2013. And in 2014, we received our first, uh, it was like a kinship uh, placement to us, who is now our daughter. And we have adopted two uh, sibling groups of three. So our first sibling group of three we adopted was in uh, 2014 and 15. And then we actually, um, since I've met with you last, have uh, completed the adoption of our second sibling group of three um, uh, since then. What have I learned from this and what will this bring to the bench? Well, on the other side of family law, I have participated in so many hearings um, and so many, um, you know, as a you know, I'm not the defendant, but I'm there given notice to be an advocate for 
the children that are in my care and I always go. Um, also, I think it gives me a perspective and understanding that um, the, this court appeals terminations regularly, serious family law cases. And I think that there probably is no more serious case that comes before the court than a termination of parental rights because you are changing the trajectory of children's lives one way or the other. You are changing and, and the life of the parent. These are serious decisions. As a foster parent, I know and support that the first duty of the foster program is to rehabilitate and reunify with the parent wherever possible. But if that parent is not able to succeed, then for the safety and the best interest of the child, that's when that child should be separated from that parent so that they can have a stronger life. And I think that my personal experience being on the non-judicial side and the non-lawyer side of those cases has given me a particular perspective that I think um, would lend a positive impression or, a, or I would be able to be a contribution to the court on these types of cases. Thank you. Um, our time is up and we thank you for your application and we wish you the best. Thank you so much.